I feel so confident about this. <laughs> I feel so confident about this that I'm gonna get this right. And if I don't, I will eat my hat. Hey YouTube, how's it going? So I'm here with the beautiful, look at that beautiful Andy Baxter and in his amazing shop and the gorgeous, oh, okay. gorgeous <laughs> Ian Martin Allison as well. And we're in, as I said, Andy's shop. And while we're here, we were, we were talking about vintage bases and I thought it'd be great to put a video together for you guys talking about our vintage bases apps. Like, are they really worth it? Cause they're so expensive. Like this one down here, for instance, this little bad boy. He's like, how much is it? I think it's 16 and a half thousand, thousand pounds. pounds. <laughs> like, is this, is it a scam? Like, ah. a vintage base is a scam. Well, it's real. I'm a massive fan of vintage bases, but in general, like when I look at my own bases, all of them are like, new-ish like i've got a few but like i've got like my favorite p base is a new it's at one like it's an alinto that i've got like it's gray i've got a custom shop and stuff like that but i do want to just shout out that i'm sat between two kind of like vintage yeah. base nerds <laughs> so i could be taken out any time but what do you guys think like why should people even consider buying a vintage base like what's the big deal why not why just not like get a custom shop like a new one wow well. Should I start? I think you should. I've got skin in the game, as you well know. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Andy did warn us, he said, I'm actually just going to be honest. You might think, oh, the, the guy that owns a base shop is just going to be like, yes, buy vintage bases. Yeah. But, you know, you've got an I mean, interesting opinion on it, right? Yeah, well, the old adage is that any, worth anything that people are willing to pay for it. Yeah. Which is partly true. There's an old story my business partner tells in the 90s at a guitar show where a Burst was up for sale, a 58, 59. The word got round that one had just sold for... $150,000. The price had previously been, I don't know, 110, 115. So all of a sudden, every other burst that was available suddenly went was up. right. What's a burst? Yeah, a strap. Uh, uh, a Les Paul. Les Paul. Um, uh, a Les Paul standard from the like 58, 59, 60. So that's one of the ways to look at it. But obviously, it's part, you're buying something to play. So it's got to be a playable instrument. I don't sell basses that don't play because otherwise, what's the point? We had this discussion earlier about whether that bass you're holding or the one you would just showed to the cameras is 10 grand better a bass yeah, than yeah. a custom shop master build, for example. Right. That's 5,000 Yeah, because this pounds. is like super, how much is this worth? Well, that one's the P bit. That's the, my, my refinish, but the one you would have in camera was the 66 Dakota Red. Yeah. That's a lot of money. It's a very rare color and it's in very good condition. Right. It's a very rare instrument. Is that 10,000 pounds better bass than a custom shop master build? Of course not. Of course it can't possibly be three times as good. Right. Yeah, so it's not three times as good, but in but terms of- But is it worth three times more? Well, in today's market, yes. So the value it hasn't is worth, sold yeah. Yet. <laughs> but the point being is in that region, in that zone, that's what a, that's what a custom color fender from that period and that condition would set you back. Is it a scam? Well, no, because a scam implies it's fake. There are fakers out there and that's something you gotta watch out for. You can usually tell from just a glance if it's refin or... Right. Yeah, because even when you look at the custom shop stuff yeah. that's sort of like, you know, heavy relic and stuff like that, you can you can tell. Oh yeah, it's, it's not done know, anything it's... close to how it really relics. Yeah, it's yeah. Not even, it's not close. That's properly reliced. That's it, even though that's a refinish. Tell us about this bass, Andy, because it's like all that's, of us have been well, these, drooling these two over are, it. These two you're holding are mine. Um, it's a 60 stack knob jazz bass and a 61 precision, both refinished. That's a very, very old refinish and has been worn. If you look at the back, you can see the wear. That's all natural. I haven't done all of it. Some of it's from me, but that's, that's what it looks like normally and the checking and everything else. Custom shop do a nice job, but to me, it looks like they've dragged it across the car park, you know. Sure. Maybe they, Sorry, Fender, I'm not going to get they did. Maybe they did. <laughs> maybe they did. <laughs> maybe some, somebody's got the job of dragging shit across the car park. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scraping yeah, it yeah. on walls. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one is a refinish and not as... Oh, is this a refinish? Yes, well? that's yeah. not nowhere near as convincing to a, a, what an original Fender finish would be like. But nevertheless, I like the bass. So there's, there's an example of something I really like, mm, yes. regardless of whether it's a real finish or not. That, and I'm, that's me as a player yes. buying those. Because you want, a, you want the real thing, but you're gonna get it for so much less money because of yeah. the simple fact that it was refinished. I love gear. You probably love gear too, but if you're interested in taking this further than just gear, if you feel like there's something missing from your playing, we have some crash courses available to you that are absolutely free, covering things like improvisation, theory, fretboard, technique. It's all available in a link in the description and it's absolutely free. I 
as I said yesterday, couldn't just personally justify spending twenty five thousand pounds on a stack knob jazz bass, which is what this would cost if it was if it weren't if it weren't really well if if it was some but the standard color you're looking at twenty to twenty five thousand pounds. Yes, if it was a custom let's, color, let's get three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it for a lot less a long a few years back. So what happens if it was a custom color? How much would it be worth? <sighs> I mean, you could... A 1960 jazz bass custom color? You don't really custom see them, no. Really? There's one place that sell pretty much custom colors across the board, and their prices are... Wow. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Just well, crazy. And I mean, I think there's this thing of tone, right, mm. where, like, does this bass sound $10,000 better? Mm. And no. Absolutely, it doesn't sound better, but it does... I bet it does sound different. It does sound different. Yes. I personally like a naturally worn an instrument. Yeah. I don't particularly like brand new finishes, particularly on necks. Yeah, right. Feel kind of sticky and mm. yes. And there's something about the well, old the lacquer ones. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. like you get that sense. It's so hard to convey on camera, right? But when you feel a neck like this that hasn't been refinished, that's mm. been worn by time and hands and playing, it's very, very special. Mm. I mean, it's just... And it's not better, it's different. Yeah. And that's the thing that has absolutely pulled me in to the, the vintage feel of thing. It. Yeah, and, and then also the nostalgia. And you know, so I have my 78 jazz bass over here, that blonde, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. maple neck jazz bass. Year, year of my birth, your birth, your birth, my birth. as well, yeah, <laughs> right, 1978. Yeah. And so I get sucked in. I mean, I am such a sucker for nostalgia. Yeah. And then, oh, I love where, you know, oh, they moved the, the thumb rest. And so yeah. I start to get into the minutia, get into sure. the design, the aesthetic. Yeah. And I think cognitively, it does affect the way you play. <laughs> right. Yeah. If you're, you know, if you're into a certain thing, and I, I make no, make no uh, it's not a, a secret, I love the Beatles, right? I've got a Hofner. Why did I buy a Hofner? Well, because of Paul McCartney. And yeah. I play it a certain way, and you have to play a Hoffman a certain way yes. because the neck's a certain shape, the body's a certain way. It's got the, it's got no contour on it, so you're kind of digging in. You, it makes you, you're in the zone. Yes. Psychologically, it, you have, it has an effect on you as well, yes. which is is tied in with the nostalgia. For sure. If your favorite player was James Jameson, you want a P bass with flats, right? And preferably an early '60s P bass with flats. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's yeah. the thing, and that is a part of my uh, career too in session world. Mm -hmm. Is I'll get asked for specific references. I want this to sound like early '70s funk. I want this to sound like Tower of Power. I want this to lean in Tame Impala direction. Yeah. I want it to be the Beatles. And if I put my hands on an instrument that automatically puts me in that mindset. Mm -hmm it helps me accomplish my job. I think it comes down to the, the word I used earlier, which is, can you justify it? Right. Prices, yes, are ever inflating in right. the world of vintage guitars across the board, whether it be basses or six strings, guitars, and amps. It's inflating because of the rarity, because of the age. Because the, they're not making them anymore. Because they're not making them There's anymore. There's only a certain amount of, course, of that's sixes, just, certain amount of 61s, yeah. yeah, yeah. The justification is, if you feel you can, and you want to own one, and you've got the money, in court, there's no scam involved. Of course. If you're going to someone reputable and you're looking for something specific, you might want a specific color. And if that's what you want and you want to keep it at home, look after it, play it, maybe go out and gig it. I remember being out on the road, um, dear friend of mine, Elliot Bloffus, uh, who was the MD for Eric Hutchinson before I took over that role. And he was telling me, I brought a bass out that was sort of more like a beater or it, was a, you know, it wasn't a vintage instrument. Mm. And he said, oh man, I saw that you got some cool old bass. Why aren't you bringing that out? And I said, well, you know, because I don't want it to get stolen or bumped. Is that what it was? Or, yeah. 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 And then he said, he said this thing that I have never forgotten. He said, yeah, but I mean, if you do this and you're out playing all the time, that's just sitting at home and you know, and then there's photos being taken and there's videos and you're spending all this time and it's not like you get to come back and do this again. And someone breaks into your house while you're out gigging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's, yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. why not bring it? It gets some bumps and bruises. So what? It and gets a little know? bit beat up, absolutely. You do, yeah, yeah. And it really inspired me. I'm like, well, I'm gonna bring the stuff that I like because there's only one time, there's only one go around. True, 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 yeah. yeah. Like I get what you're saying about, you know, the nostalgia and stuff like that. and But like a custom shop, if it was done really well, which mm -hmm. they are, would that give you the same kind of feel if you're working with a producer? Like it's not gonna sound any different, right? I, I don't think you're gonna hear, most punters, you know, people at home listening to music, my partner, 
my family, most people you speak to, other than musos like us, who are sitting around going, what bass is he playing? Yes, right. What bass is that? Has he got an effect? What's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're not going to go into the depths we're discussing it now. Yes. But as a player, when you go into the studio course, you want to be able to go in and go, I feel comfortable on the bass. I feel I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. It feels right. Is a producer going to be able to tell the difference? Yeah, because producers and engineers have sat in, in sessions for years and heard lots of different instruments. And when you've got a nice chunk of old wood with an old set of pickups that have that have aged, and they age because the magnets die off. Yep, right. Yeah, there's yeah. Nothing, there's nothing magical going on. Right. Magnets lose magnetism. <laughs> yes. Right. So they, they dull out, they mellow. Yes. This is where the mellow sound probably comes in. And of course, string choice. Right. But you can do that on any bass. For sure. But I'm not saying that only vintage basses would get you that sound. Of course not. There'll be other basses that an engineer will go, that sounds absolutely amazing, of course. Yeah. But when I've played these two, for example, to people and who have been in that, not necessarily players more on the other side of the screen or players who'd produce as well, they've gone, that just sits yeah, yeah, immediately yeah, in the mix, yeah, bang. Sure. That one particularly. Yeah. Some of them are absolutely magic. I mean, this is the thing with vintage. Some of them are absolutely Some of them are amazing, magic. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh. Yeah, like I've told you, like I played a, an early 70s jazz, it's been like the best jazz bass I ever played, yeah. ever. Yes. And it was a, an early 70s jazz bass. And, and it was just absolutely phenomenal. It played itself. And what, I think that the thing that interests me about specifically like vintage instruments like this is that I geek out a lot online on sort of like, you know, like your, your website and other websites and stuff like that. And every time I go to a shop and I've been geeking out on the, you know, the, the website online, every time I get to go to the actual shop and play all the instruments, none of them actually are like that, that I thought they were gonna like turn out. The one that I really loved online yes. is sometimes the one that I don't like. I'm I know. like, oh, yes. you know, cause it looks great, but when I play it, I'm like, uh, right. not so much. And the one that I was not bothered about at all is the one that's killer. For sure, yeah. That's it, I've had that experience so many times. You do have to play them, right? And, you and have to your to, earlier yeah. point, I think, you guys oh, both it really said helps. It. Yeah, for sure. I think you said it though, you have to be comfortable with what you're bringing into an environment. If you love a custom shop bass yeah. or a super cheap, you know, like mm. instrument that's under $500 or whatever, that's totally fine. And it's not gonna like lose you work. I mean, you're playing is yeah, the yeah, thing, yeah, 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 right? Yeah. But there is this amazing sort of conversation piece that happens around the old stuff that I have just noticed, like versus um, repros, right? Like a, yeah. like a reissue instrument custom shop instrument versus a real one. This thing happens in the studio where like, you know, imagine- You're kind of like, you're weirdly apologetic. Yes, like imagine that this was a custom shop. Yeah. Right? And I, I come, come into the, the, I come into the studio and I look and I'm like, ooh, is that, is that a real 60s? And imagining that this is a custom shop, I would say, well, no, but I mean, it's, it's it's so close and it's made on the same machinery <laughs> and actually fender did this thing where you know they measured all the distances and oh and these are hand wound pickups and i mean it's it's like as close to vintage as you're gonna get i mean it's custom shop it's very very cool very close versus if it was <laughs> and i'd be it like is. is that is that a 60s yes and you get to say that <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 yeah, no, it is cool. It is cool. Like, and I do love vintage instruments. I love the feel of them. I think that an interesting uh, thing I read online from Ken Smith, actually, uh, a few years ago on his forum that's attached to the website, the Ken Smith website, is that somebody was asking about vintage Ken Smith, not vintage Ken Smith. Let me get this right. So they messaged into Ken's forum and they were like, hey, you know, I've, I've played this, I've played one of your older instruments, yada, yada, yada. I'm like looking at ordering a new one. And Ken and Put, just putting this out there, this was kind of like a brave thing for him to, or not brave, but like a really honest thing for him to come forward and say. He was like, oh, a newer instrument, I can build you a new instrument, it's not gonna sound like one of the old ones though. Mm. Because it just needs to be, it needs to be out there in the sort of like, you know, and and just age. And he went into all of the technical realities, like, you know, the wood needs to age and this needs to happen, yada, yada, yada. And I thought that it was just a really cool thing for him to f come forward and say, hey, you know, a new instrument, even if I make it, is not gonna sound like one of the old ones. And that is my experience, actually. Like that, to, the, to my point earlier with that 70s jazz bass, it killed it. I don't think I've ever played a brand new instrument 
that's grabbed me in that way. Really? Yeah, never, yeah. never. And do you think that's because of the sound or because of the feel or is it the whole thing? Do you know combo? what? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, retracting that, I'm retracting that statement. <laughs> It, with a caveat of I have gr played new modern instruments. Yes. Like modern active basses. Five strings. That have played like butter straight off the mark. But yeah. like specifically like vintage, like Fender style instruments, for whatever reason, when I play a new one of those, the vintage ones always feel a little... Mm, I know. Yeah. Again, with another caveat, I'm just like spooning all these caveats, <laughs> that sometimes they... You know, we've talked about it. Like, sometimes I can't get the action as low as I want it on right. a vintage instrument as yep. well, though. Sure. Sometimes. And, like, yeah. why, why is that? Just something happened over time? Like, you talked about it briefly yesterday. What's the deal with that? Well, this is where we probably uh, don't want to put it on film. <laughs> 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 Which means we are going to put it on film. <laughs> well, some instruments, not all of them, get a, what's called a ski jump This at this end. And they start to go that way. So you have to sometimes shave the frets down in the opposite way sure. to get some fall away. Yes. And I don't think that's any kind of secret or any kind of horrible thing. I mean, that's just dealing with the nature of the beast, right? I mean, I think with a vintage instrument comes all of these quirks. Mm. Right? There's going to be yeah. some stuff like yeah, the knobs or maybe some crackles yeah, yeah, and there yeah, might yeah, be yeah. some, you know, there's some character, I think, yeah. that I think is actually kind of cool to learn. You know, because instead of having an instrument that perfectly suits you, that's perfect, exactly how you want it to be playing wise, exactly every note is even, dead even, I think it's not quite as interesting mm. actually as adapting well, to like, an instrument. Yeah. Like Jack White, he, he loves playing yeah. old beat up stuff that doesn't, he has to really fight with a little yeah. bit. I mean, I wouldn't go as far as that. I want something to really better play quite, quite smoothly. Yeah. But yeah, there is a. There's a quirkiness to the older stuff. Yeah. But I think we come back to the question of, is it worth it? Right now, with the way things are in just globally, guitars are still probably the best place, or one of the best places, if you have some spare money. And I appreciate that a lot of people out there don't right now. This is where I'm hoping my wife's listening. She <laughs> never watches any of the videos, but I'm like, are you about to tell us to put all our money into my I'm about to guitars? tell you to put all your money into my <laughs> <Yes>. business. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody out there, just invest. Do you think it is like a like a solid investment well, it, vehicle? Well, any inve investment vehicle, like I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I don't look at it like that. You get to an age where you've got some spare cash and you need to be able to do something with it. Then of all the things out there that you can do it with, if you are a musician, of course, it makes the perfect sense to do it with an instrument, whether it be bass, guitar. Because you can enjoy your investment. Well, of course, it's just it's a no-brainer in that sense. If you had a bass that you have at home, well, I know. I don't think you're going to lose on it. It's like a no-brainer. Yes. So, well, what, yeah, like, and, yeah. What should I be? What should we be getting? Right. What kind <laughs> of like basses? Because some of them, just to call it out, some of them like go up. Like we were talking about walls, right? Walls. And they've gone up like double, or if not three times, in the last ten years. Oh, in the last four years. Really? Yes. Well, COVID really cause a lot of it. Yeah. You know, the fact that we were all at home. The world closed down for 18 months. Guitar shops were closed. Guitar shows were closed. No, you know? Right. So people were not walking around the streets going, you know, with their guitar, I'm gonna go and trade in today at Lark Street Music in New York or Norm's Rare on the West Coast. Right. So dealers weren't getting stock. To be able to then sell on prices was just starting to go up. Inflation has, has happened across the world, and it's happening in the vintage world probably more than in a lot of other places. So it was like a perfect storm mm. to drive all of the prices up for a vintage. Industry. That's kind of I, as somebody watches the prices of guitars sort of on a daily basis because that's my job. Yeah, that it, it seems to have happened. It was it was happening slightly before that as well. Yeah, but the the lockdown seemed to accelerate it beyond. Yes. Recognition. I actually predict, I, in terms of predictions, I, me and my business partner thought the opposite was going to happen. Same. I thought the opposite was going to happen as well. I thought they were going to be worth nothing. Well, I didn't think nothing. I just thought people were going to start to offload yes. guitars because of the So fact the market will get flooded with well, well, instruments for sale and then therefore... Maybe not yeah. flooded completely, but just abundant and therefore yeah. prices would start to edge off or plateau. And it did the opposite. And it did the complete opposite. Yes. Because people held on to stuff. Shops weren't getting the stock and the prices have gone insane. Do you still think at this point these vintage instruments are a worthy investment? Well, as I just said, I think of if you look at investments in general, 
I would, and I mean this genuinely, not because I'm trying to get you to buy from me, but especially, and especially if you're a musician, yeah. it would make more sense to invest in a vintage guitar than anything else. But also you've got to be careful what, where you buy it from. You've got to make sure you're buying the right thing. Right. All original would be preferable. But refinishes, as we discussed. Well, yeah, can we talk about, about can we talk about refins as well? Because I've like you know, shout out to Jim over there. We were talking about refins mm -hmm. as well, and Jim was saying there's a lot of refins yeah. available. I've got now. I've had a few in. I just saw one refin, the other day. Refin. Well, those two are mine, but I've got another refin. Fifty nine blonde refin. What else is refinished? But I'm a total um, noob in to the, the vintage thing. So for when, when I look at it. And I'm like, and they're expensive. I'm mm. looking at, like, let's say, sort of like a jazz bass I was looking at like a few days ago. And it was like a 65, and it was a refin, and it was like seven and a half thousand quid. Mm. And for me, I'm just like, I'm like, well, if it's refinished, does that mean it's like way less valuable? Well, that, I'm not that, sure. that's the yeah. price of it. Before COVID, that's about the price of a real finish. Right. Got it. One thing that weirds me out online is I see people selling custom color refinishes, inflated more than a sunburst refinish. Now, for me, if it's refinished, it's refinished. It doesn't matter what color you put on it. It's not, <laughs> sure, it's not custom color because oh, you've done it in Sonic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's not custom yeah. color because you did it in Sonic Blue. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just, a refinish. And just in case anybody doesn't know, like for the custom colors of, a, of like a, on a Fender, it is incredible. It makes it incredibly more valuable. Yeah. So that one that I got picked up earlier, this one Dakota is a Red. 1966 Dakota Red. And it is, what was it, 16,500 quid, which is like at current rate, $18,000. Original finish. Like that. Original finish. So, But the, the key thing here is it's a 1966. And then there's another 1966, which is, is this a 66? No, that's a 65. Uh, okay, well, here, well, even more interesting. So this is less, right? How much yeah. is this one? That's, at, I think, at 9,250. Nine five hundred. So this is actually older. So yeah. you know, simple vintage Simpleton here would be like, well, sixty five should be more valuable than a sixty six, right? But because it's a custom color, it's just more rare. It's way more expensive. It's hugely, hugely more rare than a Sunburst. Yeah, yeah and yes. this one is a sixty six, right? Yeah. And how much is this one in in a non custom seven, color? Seven seven two fifty, I think. Okay, so it's more sense. than double for yeah. a custom color. That yeah. takes it back to what we were talking about. Yeah. You know, it's it's not the sound. It's it's the it's the it's, feeling. It's the re <laughs> it's the feelings, feelings you get. Oh, oh. <laughs> the refins, right? When somebody's looking at refinishes, obviously it's less. How much less? Like how much less is it worth? A lot of people would say, well, they used to say half. I would argue it's more like around two thirds, just under two thirds, if everything else is original. So cool. if you then adding in things like refrets, rewound pickups, things like you can start to gradually ease off. But if you had a body only refinish, yep. yeah, I would argue it's somewhere around about two thirds, okay. maybe 60% would be a fairer. So a way to get in essentially, I mean, right. If, if you want a really cool, special old vintage piece, but you don't have the full three thirds, but maybe you have the two thirds. <laughs> I, right? want, I want this bass, by the way. <laughs> Do you? I think you might have to talk to the man. Incredible bass, yeah. Let me run this by you. I have a great friend named Dan Folds who has collected art over the years and is a guitar player. And he said, if you are a collector or an investor, he said, and you're a player, a guitar player, bass player, instruments are the best things to buy because they're double art. He said, mm. think about this. He's like a painting. You buy and you put it on the wall. You look at it. And it doesn't do anything. You look at it. But if you love the aesthetic, the yeah. vibe, the design of this, you buy this. But hang on. Also, you can use it as a tool to make, make more art. art. <laughs> so he says it's double, double art. art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double, double yeah. bubble, as you say. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's personal taste, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not expecting every bass player to prefer the look of a pre-CBS Fender, for example. Right. If you love those old instruments, looking at them is part of your sensory so true experience. Yeah. Of course, then you pick it up and you play it. <sighs> Can you guys just like staring into each other's <laughs> eyes? Just like, oh, this oh, is so Andy. good. Do you want a hug? <laughs> no, but they, it, it is true. I have get my guitars above my record player in the living room. I don't just look at them. I pull them off the wall and play them. Right. Yeah, yeah. But part of the experience is looking at them before I take them off the wall. But there's some beautiful new instruments too. Of course. I mean, of course, there's some wonderful wonderful makers and beautiful exotic woods and and different shapes now that people are into it doesn't float my boat but i don't i know that i'm not the only person buying neither are you right 
Yeah. So. yeah. Okay, so let's do this blindfold thing. Give us this. I need to take this off for you. Blindfold up, baby. Okay, I'm not going to mention what base I'm going to pass you, but I'm going to give you two bases, okay? And you've got to tell me which one's the vintage. But you, you're not, yeah, I can't tell you anything other than that. I'm going to go in confident. I'm going in confident. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Are you ready, Ian? Okay. Wow. Here we go. And now that's a weird experience. You played it. Right, don't, yeah, just put, yeah. Uh-huh. Ready? Uh-huh. Okay. Now, what is the question I'm answering? <laughs> You're I gonna... know what that is. I know. I mean, I know what kind of bass that is. Yeah. And did you do do that by the sound? Uh, the sound and the feel. Although yeah. when you played it, I didn't know what it was. Oh. Wow. Okay, so they're both stingrays. They are both stingrays. What's the question? Which one is the vintage one? The vintage one is this one. Final answer? Final answer. Yes. It is, is it correct? Yeah, yes. correct, yeah. So for you guys who weren't, uh, didn't know, this is actually a heavy relic. <gasps> Cliff Williams signature yeah, Cliff stingray. Cliff Williams signature stingray. This thing and that's sounds a insane. And it's badass. What he yeah, what gave it away? Um, I have a 79 stingray and the feel of the neck, um, the radius, the edges, the gloss, this felt like a like a a smoothed out, and it's got like all oh, of it's the got a little, yeah, dude, yeah, it's got all on the edges. It feels it like felt old, like, old. Felt like a relic to me though, and and this Did one it? felt like mine. I guess so. It's probably unfair because I have one of these. I would never have been able to get this, but ever. This one is lower output, but these sound so different. Let me see that one one more time. But it sounds more modern um, or like, I don't know, this pickup and preamp sound like the result of a company saying, it needs to be louder <laughs> yeah. and bigger and more. Yeah, 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 and to yeah, me, yeah. it doesn't sound better. It sounds louder. It sounds louder and ah, uh, ah. Uh, there's like a honk. Oh, that means this is honk, honk. Round this is like smoother yeah, yeah. sounding. Okay, so that's it for now. And obviously a huge thanks to Andy Baxter from andybaxterbass.com. You can check him out there. And let me know if you want more content like this. Like I absolutely love geeking out over basses and bass gear. Anyway, take it easy and I will see you from, I'll see you from uh, this man shed. See you in a bit, bye.